um, I am going to call the meeting to order. Uh, first thing is to review and approve the agenda, and we don't have a ton on our agenda tonight. Um, any thoughts on changes? Executive session be added. Well, we can, oh, you choose. can vote to go into executive session if you choose. Okay. Okay. Well, we could add it to our agenda now. Couldn't we? Sure. Well, As a discussion, you point. don't actually have to add this to your agenda. You have the the, the action item is the appointment of the this, the seat. So, but an ex executive session doesn't have to be worn. You can still vote to go into executive session anytime you want, as long as you meet the criteria. I know, but we usually try to put it out if we know ahead. So I thought we're changing the agenda. No, that's okay. fair. Okay. I think it's fair to assume that we, we probably will. Um, Did you all get both sets of minutes? Because I'm looking at the email I sent out. That I, <coughs> two, uh, I got two, but I got one that's July and one that's August 18th. I didn't get an August 25th. Oh, 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 oh that was not right. Okay, sorry about that. August 25th, I didn't get so, so we want to include the minutes in the consent agenda. Oh, is that not good? It's not. Yes. Well, we can. Uh, if, if you all didn't have a chance to look at it, they can still share information. Well, you emailed them to us. They, they were on the link for the meeting. Oh, they, yeah. oh, okay. The July my, <clears> 21st. Yeah, just those two. Yeah. August 18th. Oh, yeah. No, they're there. They're there. Okay. Um. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yep. I'm going to do that. Um, okay. So I'm otherwise hearing no changes um, to the agenda. So we'll consider the agenda approved. Uh, on to general business and appearances. This is an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council on a topic that is not otherwise on our agenda. Um, if folks, uh, so, um, yeah, there will be an opportunity for public comment. Uh, just prior to or as a part of uh, the appointment to district three city councilor seat um so if you have a comment about that then that can go then otherwise uh, yeah if you have something not on the agenda you'd like to say now would be good if you would say your name where you live and try to keep your comments to two minutes that would be wonderful go ahead Uh, Steve Whitaker, um, I want to raise a couple of things I've raised already that the the task force met, homelessness task force met today and their best effort for addressing the potential wave of over 100 people unhoused this winter is to try to use city money to buy some rooms at the Arcana Lodge. That is uh, the least desirable uh, option. I think you all need some executive level intervention in the effectiveness of that committee. You can continue to delude yourself and think they're making progress, but that is not the case. In two years, the city needs, the city manager needs to be directed to enforce the lease terms for the bathrooms at, at the transit center. You have not had or uh, managed the bike path. The crack ceiling is going to go really destructive. Uh, there's no crack ceiling on the section between Taylor Street and the bridge. Uh, there's one inch wide cracks, uh, horizontal and lat longitudinal that need addressing. I brought it to public works and no action. The shelter has still not been power washed despite the health hazard that was acknowledged by our health officer fire chief a month ago, six weeks ago. Uh, somebody went through the multi-use path with a mower, looks like a drunk driver doing a hit and run operation, just a, running over trash, leaving it, all the shredded trash, et cetera. Just an abomination. The transit center handicapped doors. I was following a, somebody in on a, in a wheelchair. The paddles and the electrical wires are still hanging there. How it got our building inspector certified that building is occupiable when we never bothered to finish the handicapped controls for the Taylor Street doors is, uh, let's, let's just say it's another example of America's most mismanaged small town capital. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Okay. Yep, yeah, okay, uh, go ahead, Peter. 
Uh, I'm Peter Kelman. Uh, I live in District 3 in Montpelier. And um, as a resident of that district, I would like to thank the City Council for extending the deadline for applications to be appointed uh, to fill the uh, council vacancy created by the departure of Dan Richardson. I, I think it's clear that this extension resulted in four applications, all from well-qualified individuals who collectively represent a considerably more diverse background and experience than has generally been the case for city council members. And I would venture to say that without the extension, this would not have been the case. Indeed, you may have received as few as a single application by the time of the previously announced deadline. And I would urge the council to continue to be cognizant of the need for clear, timely, and transparent communication to Montpelier residents, especially those who may be directly impacted by matters before the council and those who may be underserved and are underrepresented. And in this regard, I'd like to repeat the concerns I voiced at the prior meeting that the city website and other communication efforts by city government are falling short of what is needed in today's complex media environment and should be reviewed and improved. In addition to the examples I cited at the last meeting, I'll mention two examples that arose in just this past week. First, the nearly citywide boil water notice, which many people did not see, or if they did, they did not understand, it applied to them because the long list of streets wasn't included in the notice itself and proved to be quite difficult to access, particularly by smartphone. Moreover, there were no updates on the city website over the weekend, leaving many people anxiously asking if anyone knew whether it was still in force or not. The second is a consent agenda item on tonight's agenda labeled approval of a resolution for a VCDP planning grant application. Talk about a lack of transparency. Almost no one outside of this room would have any idea what this is about unless they very carefully read today's rather long uh, 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 Times Argus article about tonight's meeting as I did and or open the agenda items files and clicked on Habitat Resolution 2021. Don't get me wrong. I'm very much in favor of such affordable and workforce housing development, even in my neighborhood. But this is exactly the kind of project that raises NIMBY fears. And so it should be communicated about early and often to engage those who may be affected, both neighbors who might object and people who might need such housing. Only by engaging effective folks at the early stages will the city ever be successful in actually addressing issues like affordable housing and energy conservation. The parking garage fiasco shows what happens when people feel, however inaccurately and unfairly, that the city and the city council are pulling a fast one over the public and using tax dollars to support private enterprise. I don't believe that myself. In the case of this resolution, I suggest that it be removed from tonight's consent agenda and then a motion be made and discussed to take this up in a subsequent meeting as a regularly discussed posted agenda item with a title that makes clear what it is about. And I suggest further that the district three city councilors, including the new one that will be named tonight, communicate with their constituents about this matter and encourage them to learn more about this potential housing development project in their neighborhood, as well as the one on the Brown Derby property that hasn't been talked about, despite the fact that I've tried to get it talked about publicly with people in our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Uh, I see uh, Zach Watson, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to um, uh, thank uh, Peter for his comments. Uh, I work for Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we have we um, and are putting this resolution forward. We're excited that the City Council is looking at this for us. Um, just wanted to let folks know that we did have a public hearing on Monday, um, and unfortunately, nobody showed up. Uh, that was unfortunate. That's part of the community development block planning uh, process. Uh, we posted it as was required 
um, with the Community Development Block Grant Program, um, which was in the newspaper. And um, it's just too bad that we didn't have some more folks there. So, but uh, we have been co communicating with folks in the public about this. Um, just want to reiterate that this is a planning grant, uh, which we have not received yet. All this is doing is uh, giving us permission to apply for it. Um, so, Peter, when the uh, what uh, and forever for other folks, if the grant is approved, uh, there will be plenty of opportunity for input from the community to make sure this is something that meets the needs and the desires and um, the, the culture here in, in Montpelier. Um, but thank you for your comments on that, Peter. And I do hope the city council will take up this resolution tonight so that we can uh, submit this application in a, um, before the uh, application deadline is due. All right, thank you. Uh, Morgan, go ahead. Yes, uh, Zachariah's comments, no, not with standing. I second, uh, Peter's uh, comments and concerns about uh, tonight's co consent agenda and think it's worthy uh, of consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, other... what, what, what I meant was Peter's comments about the, tonight's consent agenda is worthy of consideration. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Morgan. Uh, all right. Uh, any further comments? Okay. Um, so we are gonna move on then to the consent agenda and I actually need to recuse myself um, from item C. <clears throat> so is, uh, if we could, if there would be a motion uh, without item C, that would be great. Um, I move the consent agenda without item C. I'll start. Okay, so motion in a second. Any further discussion? Okay, uh, yes, Donna, go I, ahead. I just didn't hear a deadline for when we needed to have this done. Have what done? The resolution in order to support. For item C? Yes. Um, there, uh, we could ask that. Um, Zach, are you still there? I'm still here. Um, good question, Donna. Uh, so the, um, the uh, the Vermont Community Development Program will be reviewing the applications in November. Um, they would like to have off applications in um, sometime. They have a, a goal of, of mid-September. Um, we are basically, this is the last piece of the application we need to put forward. And if uh, after we submit it, there's still some additional information that's needed. We, that's why we're putting it forward now so that we can have plenty of time uh, to address whatever requests the Vermont Community Development Program needs. It's a big application. It's pretty hefty. Lots of work went into it. Thank you. Does that clarify? We could do it at our next meeting. Um, it would, so our next meeting is September 8th. Um, would that be a sufficient date, Zach? I should probably not be yeah. talking about this. I should not be talking about this. Jack, you want to you wanna run this part? <laughs> yes, thank you. I, I would just suggest as a point of order that we have a motion to, to oh, yeah. adopt the consent agenda without that item. I suggest we take that up and then take up the <laughs> item from the habitat. That seems fair. Um, I think I can run this part then. Yeah. <laughs> and then, okay, sorry, <laughs> thank you. Uh, all right, so. Um, uh, there's a motion and a second about uh, parts A and B. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank, great, thank you. And opposed? All right, so uh, that is, uh, that passes. Uh, I will leave you to the discussion or not about item C. And can, oh, I, well, I can't, I'm not gonna call on you. So Jack, can I just, uh, so this is just about the previous just because we just approved the firefighters contract. Yes. Uh, I just I just want to take a moment while we're um, doing something for the firefighters and just appreciate. I mean, I was just thinking back to when COVID started and you know our firefighters, paramedics, EMTs were out there in the community. Like think back to when we knew nothing about COVID and they were have been going out, you know, into people's homes, have been out there in the community helping people in need. And I, I know I'm grateful and the community, uh, people I've talked to have just been so grateful for, you know, all that they've been doing for us. And so I just want to take a moment to 
appreciate and thank um, our, our firefighters and the team over there for, for being there through really hard times. Um, and, you know, so just want to take a moment to say thanks. Yep, I agree. Thank you. All right, Jack. Okay, thank you, Madam uh, Mayor. Um, we're now on to uh, item C of, uh, of the consent agenda. Um, what's your pleasure on this item? Motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, any discussion? You can take comment on this. Well, let's, let's see if there's discussion from the council. Lauren. Um, just a quick question. I think, uh, Zach, so you you alluded to that there's a lot of public input opportunity like during, so this is a feasibility study, uh, the grant of the project. Uh, just, just wondering if you could talk like a little bit more to, just to, um, you know, Peter's point and, and Morgan, just curious like what that might look like so people would have a better sense of how they might engage in the process from here um, as we move forward. Certainly, thank you, Lauren. Um, uh, so uh, just, I think it's important to keep in mind, this is a feasibility study. Um, it's funds for a feasibility study for a fairly complicated parcel of land. Um, and at this point, we are looking to determine whether it is even possible to build anything on this parcel. Um, so that's stormwater. We're looking at stormwater mitigation plans. We're looking at um, you know, what access might look like. This would be an extremely difficult property to access. Uh, we're looking at how many houses we can build up there. Ultimately, all of that will contribute towards the determination of whether acquiring this property and, and building houses on it is even feasible. So um, it, it's at, at that point, uh, if there is, if it is determined that this is a feasible project, um, then, then we will actually talk, then we'll go through the DRB, uh, the, to, uh, to, and there'll be public opportunities for public input at that point. Um, obviously neighbors will be abutted, um, but, you know, the abutters will be notified of things like this. Um, but this is going to take a lot to actually make this process, this project feasible. Um, there's been a lot of discussion, um, and I know support from, from folks in the community about the need for affordable housing. Um, and uh, I can tell you right now that uh, community pushback and, and delays um, are, are gonna make this even more challenging uh, of a project. So uh, we just need to figure out if we can even do anything on this project to begin with. Further comment or question from the council? Okay. Yeah, thanks. Um, I appreciate that um, perspective. I, I do think that, um, at, you know, I support moving forward with doing a feasibility study, but at the same time, I also want to make sure that we're, we're making sure we're not limiting the community discussion to just the abutters, because I think that you've got a really tight community um, geographically in that area. And so I know that there are obligations just to invite abutters, but I think that um, we want to make sure that that near, if things do progress forward, um, that we're looking at a, a broader outreach, whether it's by the city or, or whatever mechanism that's needed, that we're making sure we're including folks um, in that whole area of the Northfield Street. Thanks. Any, any other comments from members of the council? Any comments from members of the public? Please go ahead. Steve and Peter. Uh, Steve Whitaker. Uh, I came in Monday and looked at the city bullet board and for, looked at all the meetings uh, that were worn there. Uh, I didn't see a warning for a public hearing on this CDBG grant. And part of my concern is that we have a almost a chronic history of cutting corners. And while I support in concept Habitat for Humanity's goals, uh, I don't want to perpetuate this uh, cutting corners. Uh, did, John, do you recall having a, uh, a, a posting on the bulletin board for a meeting 
that we were told was warned a public hearing on the CDBG application? No, but they're not usually on my board. So. Okay, well, I, I don't really want to interrogate Zach about it, but my point is that the, the last grant that I spoke about was the 750,000 for down for uh, another way to put in a bathroom and showers. That was three years ago and that bathroom and shower still isn't done. So the, you y'all are well aware of the garage fiasco and the corners that were cut on that. We can argue about that another day. Uh, well, I'm not gonna let that statement go unchallenged. Corners were not cut on the, on the garage project. And there was ample, there were ample public hearings and- uh, Okay, there was no the traffic study of the comment. truck now, impact and the removal is, of the- I'm, The chair's gonna rule that if you have a comment that's germane to the item before- Well, you just, you just made the comment, you, you just opened it up. Mr. Whitaker, if you had a, a comment that's germane to the item- It's germane the to what you're, you just challenged my comment that okay. opened it up for, <clears> it's now germane. You're a lawyer, you should know that. It's not germane if you have a comment relating to- So I should have cut off your non-germane comment? If you have a comment relating to the feasibility study- To hell with you. To make it. Okay, Peter Kelman. Um, yeah, I, I just want to echo what, what, Jay, what Jay said about a broader than just the abutters. And it, it, it's not just because this is Northfield Street or it's my district. I think this is a really important thing that I, I, I want the council to think about. What, what Zach said is true, that it, it, this is very preliminary and it will go before the DRB and there are all these procedures. The problem is, I think that the council needs to go beyond the, the legally required procedures. When I inquired about uh, having a meeting for our neighborhood about the about the Brown Derby situation, I was told, well, that's just for the abutters. Well, no, it's not just for the abutters. It, it, it's, the, the, these kind of projects affect a major artery and a, a pretty intact neighborhood. And this would be true no matter what the neighborhood was. Um, I really think, Zach, in all due respect, going through the usual procedures. That's why there was nobody at your meeting, because you went through the usual procedures. You didn't make an affirmative effort to get people from the neighborhood. I'm not blaming you, but I think it's very important to make an affirmative effort to engage the people, in, in fact, to engage the very people who are likely to, let me say it this way, have concerns. I went around my neighborhood and asked about the Brown Derby. Almost nobody in my neighborhood knew about it. And when I provided them with the information that I'd gotten from the development group, people raised questions. Nobody said, I don't want that. They raised questions about traffic. They raised questions about parking. They raised questions about whether there was really room for that many things. They raised legitimate questions. This is the time to engage them. I don't mean this moment. I mean, before you go ahead and do finish a feasibility study. Part of the feasibility study should be, will there be that kind of pushback that, that, that Zach talked about? Yeah, there will be. So let's head it off. Head it off by engaging people right away. And, and Jack, the point isn't that corners were cut. The point is that that's the perception. I think it's incorrect. You think it's incorrect. But that's the perception, and you guys can do something about heading off that perception. And that's what I would urge you to do. I'm not saying to put this off. It, it, it should be, you should approve this. But I'm, I'm not sure you should approve it tonight. Maybe you should, but let's really say we're going to change the way we do these things. We're going to really make an effort to talk about these things very thoroughly, even when they're just an idea. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Patrick Healy. Patrick, if you're trying to say something, you're muted. Okay. Anything further from the uh, council? Are we ready for a vote? 
All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The chair votes aye. And at this point, the chair is returned to the mayor. <laughs> Okay, hey, thank you. All right, so we are um, up to uh, the appointment for District 3. Uh, all right, so uh, we had four uh, applicants for this position, and I, I see two of them here, and I am not sure if any of the others are joining us virtually. Um, Cameron, are you running the, the virtual stuff? Um, is there another page or not? There's not. There's not. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, well, so uh, I, at this point, I would love to invite uh, the candidates who are here to come up and introduce themselves. Tell us about your interest in the city council. Uh, and I have, a, I have a few questions. I have a couple of questions I'm going to ask of every candidate. And so um, just so you're prepared, uh, the questions I'm gonna ask you um, are, what are your top three priorities for the city um, or things that you would like to see changed in the city? And then second question, uh, when you disagree with someone, how do you normally handle it? Um, the, just so you're prepared. Uh, those, that's what I'm going to ask. Um, and I don't know if other folks have questions that, that you're going to ask. If you, if you do, if you'd like to offer them now, that's great. Otherwise, I mean, we can obviously spontaneously ask questions as well. Um, any, anybody else want to jump in? Okay, just checking. Uh, all right. Uh, so with that, uh, either of you could go first. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Alice Goltz. Oh, yes. Okay. Good evening. Okay. My name is Alice Goltz. I tried to run for this position before. I wind up getting 222 votes. I live in um, public housing, so I know what it's like to struggle. What my concerns are about. Um, housing. My concerns are about um, with the, the mentally challenged, where there has been um, issues with the police and the shootings. I feel that there should be um, a, a social worker should, should escort them to help so things like this don't happen. Um, I understand what it's like to um, struggle as a parent because I'm a school crossing guard. So I see the kids every day and I talk to the parents. So I know how it is to struggle. I also know how it is to struggle as being disabled and being a parent. So um, I, can, I can be a support to other parents. And I feel that I wanna, I wanna help my constituents in this in this community thank you for your time yeah thank you um if i can ask you one question you um you kind of answered my question about um uh things you'd like to see change in the city or your, or your priorities uh, but any thoughts on like when you disagree with someone how do you normally handle that well, when I disagree with somebody, yeah, yeah, I I try to talk it out with them. Yeah, like I may not agree with everything you say, and I may either tell them, "Well, let's talk about it. Yeah. Let's try to come out with a resolution to the problem." Great. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for Alice? Okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Is this all right? Yep. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Carrie Brown. Um, thank you for your consideration for this position. Um, I am a 25 year resident of Montpelier. I'm married to the city clerk, as many of you know. Um, and I just want to address any kind of possible conflicts right up front about that. Uh, he and I have talked about this, and uh, my hope would be that the council could work out something where the city clerk's budget was separated from the rest of the municipal budget so that I don't have to be involved in discussions about my husband's salary. <laughs> and because uh, that's an obvious conflict. If, and if there are other potential conflicts or appearances of conflict that would come up from that, I'd be very open to working those out and very sensitive to that. Um, so this is a position that I've thought about pursuing at various times over the years, many times in the past. Um, and uh, this timing <laughs> seems like a, like a good opportunity. Um, at the same time, uh, I just wanna acknowledge that you have some really very, very strong candidates uh, for this role in front of you right now. Um, I, I would hope that you um, don't hold it against anybody who's not here to speak for themselves tonight. I, I'm here because um, I have a very good sense being married to the city clerk, having been lived here for a long time, serving on the board of civil authority for many years, a really good sense of how things work and what's going on. Um, I wouldn't necessarily have known that it was an expectation that I'd be here tonight if I weren't that plugged in. So there may be other folks who aren't necessarily understanding that. Um, so just a little bit about, about myself. I'm on the Board of Civil Authority. As I mentioned, I've been a Justice of the Peace since 2002. Uh, I, my, I work here in Montpelier as the Executive Director of the Vermont Commission on Women. And um, I've been doing that for uh, nine years. And um, I have two kids. One has graduated from Montpelier High School and the other is in his senior year at Montpelier High School. I live on St. Paul Street. We've, been, we've lived there for uh, 20 years, 21 years, 20, wow, 21 years. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I would say that my, um, really my big concern about Montpelier is about the livability of the city. And I have found this to be a wonderful place to live and to raise kids in many, many ways. I think that there are um, there are a lot of folks though in our city who have had a harder time with that. Um, being able to find affordable housing, good quality housing, being able to access educational opportunities, being able to access transportation, um, things like that I think are easier for some of us in the city than for others. So um, I, I come from a position of relative privilege and so that makes things easier for me. That's not been the case for a lot of other folks in Montpelier. So um, I am very appreciative of the work that you've done lately, uh, looking at our homeless neighbors and feel very encouraged about that and um, anything that we can do to make Montpelier inclusive and equitable and a welcoming place is very, very high up for me. Uh, I also would say that uh, my concerns about transparency and open government are really high and up there and it's i wouldn't say that that montpelier is doing a terrible job with that but it's always something that needs to be kept at a very high value and and i mean just you know the example of not my not necessarily knowing that being here tonight was was important um is just a, an example of a, a little bit of communication that could be uh, probably served to be a little bit more welcoming to people who aren't necessarily as, as tuned in and um, I also, uh, I get inordinately excited about tiny little administrative details. And so, <laughs> for instance, I know that you all have been working on updating and kind of cleaning up city ordinances for quite a while now. And I know there's a lot more to do on that. I know that in Montpelier, it is illegal for a woman to be a prostitute, but it's not illegal for a man to be a prostitute. <laughs> because the ordinance hasn't been cleaned up and looked at in a while and I would I would love to get in there and dig around and <laughs> try to fix stuff like that uh, and even if I weren't part of city council that's actually something I would love to be involved in if, if it's something you're going to take up again at some point. Uh, so uh, as far as handling disagreement I'm not a particularly conflict oriented person 
Um, I'm also not likely to just kind of let things go by if I disagree with them. I will, I will speak up and say, say something about it. I think from what I've observed of this group, this seems like a pretty well-functioning group where people have, I'm making some assumptions, but you, you look like you share common values and you share common goals. And so that always makes it easier when there are disagreements about how to get to those goals when there isn't disagreement about just one simple goal. And so that certainly helps. And then I would just want to say one more thing, which is that I know that um, among the, the other applicants for this position, there are people who represent perspectives that I, as a white woman of some privilege, could never represent on this on this body. And um, if I were in your shoes, I would be seriously considering those perspectives as incredibly valuable. And um, uh, so that's all I have. <laughs> Happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Go ahead, Donna. Just no matter what, you may be on that committee for ordinances. <laughs> I, I honestly, we hear things like that really and we remember. remember. <laughs> Great. Great. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. And just to check, Lauren, yeah, I didn't turn around to see if you had anything, but Lauren, no questions? Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And I uh, also just want to check in uh, to see if um, if either uh, Jean Leon or Jennifer Morton are with us uh, virtually, and I don't see them. Um, I just want to check. I'm, I'm assuming this hand from Brian Pete is not that he wants to say something. I think that's the yeah that's that's oh that's that, the mouse. oh that's the mouse thank you okay <laughs> <laughs> that's a new one I don't don't know that it's one. a mouse for a symptom okay <clears throat> and uh, for for now this is it's still okay for folks from the public to uh, comment so go ahead Morgan Morgan Brown uh, District Three resident um I just want to voice my support for Alice Goltz. Uh, she was a former neighbor of mine and I consider her a friend. Um, she does a lot of work behind the scenes. Uh, many people might not be aware of uh, what she quietly does uh, on behalf of others. And she's very diligent. She takes the time and she has a lot of questions and um, I think she's worthy of consideration and uh, I would ask you to, uh, if I had a vote, I'd be vote for Alice. I signed her petition uh, this time around and also when she ran for her election. And as she mentioned, she did get 222 votes, you know, in her first time out. And I, I think that was impressive. And it speaks to, uh, you know, the many people that uh, already know her and, and that she's been involved with over the years. Uh, so please uh, consider her for appointment. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan. Um, Mayor, this is Zach Hughes. Go ahead, Zach. Um, I think you guys have a very, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Dan Richardson for his service on the council, and I'm sorry to see him go. Um, but I wanted to uh, say you guys have, y'all have a uh, unique opportunity tonight um, to uh, bring a very uh, per, uh, new perspective to the council that will um, uh, that is very, she's very diligent. Uh, her name's Alice Galtz. Uh, she's very diligent. She comes uh, from a past life of being a parent and out there uh, every day doing the crossing guard thing and basically being very passionate about the issues. Um, and I think this is a very unique opportunity for the council tonight to look at bringing uh, Alice on to uh, provide a very unique uh, perspective that is uh, rarely seen 
uh, here. Thank you very much. I am in support of Alice Galtz. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. All right. So uh, with that, I am in anticipation that we would go into executive session. Uh, Jack. I move that we go into executive session to discuss an appointment of a public officer or employee pursuant to 1 DSA section 313A3. I'll second it. Okay. Then a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Okay. Um, and Lauren, um, we will see you in the executive session. Um, Thank you. Okay. See you. See you soon. And someone's going to bring a laptop. Mm -hmm. and yep. The session is in. Yep. And uh, we will return to this room in a in a bit. <laughs> we were able to get in touch with one of them, uh, who has since joined us on the uh, in the Zoom link. Oh. Okay. Great. Thank you. To keep talking so you can <laughs> great okay thank you um all right so um i believe i saw jennifer morton uh join us here in the zoom um welcome jennifer uh so we would love to uh hear from you about your interest in uh joining the city council and then just to to uh, give you a heads up i have a couple questions i'd like to ask one is uh, what are your top three priorities for the city or uh, top three ways in which you'd like to see the city change? Um, second question is uh, when you disagree with someone, how do you normally handle that? Um, hopefully that's clear enough through my mask. Um, and uh, all right, I'm going to turn it over to you, Jennifer. Okay, thank you, everybody. I'm sorry, I had no idea that you were all meeting tonight and that I was even a contender still, so I apologize. Um, and also, I'm not prepared at all because I didn't know this was going to happen. So, um, you know, I work for the youth, I've worked at the Youth Service Bureau in Washington County years ago. I've worked for Spectrum, and now I work for the Family Center of Washington County. So, you know, Folks that are precariously housed or unstably housed or homeless um, are community members I've worked with for over 20 years, both here in Vermont and in Oregon. So anything to help support those communities and uplift those communities is extremely important for me as, as is affordable housing. You know, there's not a lot of infrastructure right now for that, but those are things that are really important to me because affect a lot of people and I don't think that they get centered as much as they should. Um, also, you know, equity for the BIPOC community. I'm an indigenous woman and moving to Vermont from a place where there was a much larger um, indigenous community um, in Oregon and then coming here to central Vermont, it was it was a challenge to find community and I've been here six years and I'm still having a hard time and I've been on the Commission for Native American Affairs for the state of Vermont for the last four years. We've made a lot of wonderful changes, but I think having some sort of community center or place to gather um, would be really important for a lot of indigenous people that live here in Montpelier. Um, we all stay in our houses and we would like to gather. So um, also um, I've talked to a lot of my neighbors and there's a lot of talk about the roads. I'm not a homeowner, I'm a renter. And I think I'm in the minority as far as potential city council folks. Um, but I would like to be a homeowner. And um, so talking to my neighbors about the roads and you know, various, issues um, is still something that I'm working on. So I apologize for not having three specific things. I was nominated by a neighbor. Um, so this is all very new to me. And I apologize. What was your final question? Well, yeah, no worries. Um, 
the last question was when you uh, disagree with someone, how do you normally handle that? Or what does that look like for you? Um, you know, I approach everything uh, through a cultural lens because my, my culture is, is how I walk through the world, right? So um, I know that a lot of people don't agree with my thoughts and that's okay. Everybody's, you know, allowed to have their own opinions and thoughts and, you know, in a perfect world, we would all be able to have good conversations where everybody's communicating in a good way and hearing each other. And um, sometimes that happens and sometimes it doesn't. So I try to really keep myself calm and try to just actively listen to the other person, try and understand where they're coming from and, you know, staying calm. <laughs> Staying calm is important. I have two small kids, so that is something that I am working on every day, um, not just as a social worker, but as a parent and a neighbor and community member. So, Great. Uh, thank you so much. Sorry, I don't want to, um, if you have more to say, I don't want to um, cut you off. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions that folks from the council may have for Jennifer. Uh, Connor, go ahead. I, I, and I think I probably ask all three candidates here while we have them in the room. By no means is it binding, but uh, this term only goes till March, at which point there'll be another election. Uh, maybe start with Jennifer. Um, is your intention, again, you could always <laughs> change your mind. Would you, would you run for election for the seat if you were appointed tonight? You know, that's something that I was talking to my husband about and um, also my ceremony community because I'm really engaged in my um, ceremony community. And actually, yes, I think I would try to stay on. I don't want to just halfway do something. I'm going to commit to something I want to commit. Thanks, and I just asked the other two the same question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would Okay, thanks so much. Okay. Um, other, any other questions or comments from council? Okay, great. Uh, thank you. And thank you so much, Jennifer, for, uh, for joining us in a, a sort of last minute way. I'm glad that we were able to get in touch with you. Oh, I think you're muted. Oh, oh sorry. Ready. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, so at this point, we are probably going to go back into executive session. We'll have some further conversation, and then we'll come back. Uh, okay. So, is there a motion? Move we enter executive session to discuss the appointment of a public official pursuant to one BSA three thirteen eight three. I'll second it. Okay. Further discussion. Okay, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Okay, thanks very much. We will be back. Second. Okay, further discussion. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, so we are in regular session. Um, I just wanted to check one more time just to see if Gene had joined us, but he looks like he is not. Is that accurate? That is correct. Okay. 
Uh, all right, so we have a motion. Yep. Um, so I want to make a motion that we appoint Jennifer Morton to fill the vacant um, District 3 seat until um, uh, vacated by Dan Richardson until um, the election uh, at town meeting day in March. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, great. I'll second. Motion and second. All right. Any further discussion? I want to object to the uh, process by which you phone a person improperly in from executive session who invites them and gives them a second bite at showing up, uh, uh, which is unfair. There's it's, been a, a motion and a second. Um, yeah. And I think people are taking further comment at this point. Um, so, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, all right, thank you. I want to thank all of you who uh, put your names in. Um, it was a good discussion, and uh, it's really um, it was wonderful to have wonderful uh, uh, qualified candidates. So thank you, and best of luck uh, for for the future. Uh, thank you. you can talk to phone. Yes, go ahead. My name, my name is Alice Bolt, and I don't think I'm very clear that this woman came into this um into this meeting at the last second. You know, I don't think it was fair to me or the other person. And I think that there should be there should be um another meeting about it. Well, thank you, Alice. Okay. Oh, um, well, on this topic, uh, I, I believe that the this is a an example of the way this council does business. This is cutting corners to, in effect, install somebody. This has happened with Jack's seat. This happened with, you know, y'all are manipulating the process when you call a person who didn't show up uh, from an executive session. That's an improper use of executive session. And then extend and go hold a second executive session in order to install that person. Uh, it's just totally improper. It reeks of the, the constant uh, unethical and improper actions by this council. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, I guess I would also just like to add that um, we wanted to do everything we could to ensure that uh, everybody who uh, wanted to be involved could be involved. Um, and we were able to uh, reach out to both candidates, but uh, hold back from them. Uh, so anyway, there we are. Um, and thank you again. And uh, I think that is the end of our regular business. So we are um, on to council reports. Um, <laughs> Donna, you don't have to go first if you don't no, want to. No, it's really great to be back live and, and hope that uh, I can continue to be here. We, We'll probably alternate being quarantined for one reason or another, but it's good to be here. Yep. I'll pass. Okay. Uh, I just want to thank. Oops. Just want to thank the uh, people who uh, applied. We have great public service among uh, more than one of the candidates, and I appreciate your application and your desire to serve. Yes. Um, Lauren. Uh, yeah, I would just echo gratitude for everyone who put themselves out there and um, excited to welcome Jennifer and to work with uh, Carrie on our ordinance updates and many other things and um, our other <laughs> folks as well. Um, and other than that, I will pass. Uh, all right, and I will pass for the evening, John. Okay. Um, uh, Bill. Just see you all next week for strategic planning. Come with your big, big vision hats on. Is it? And is Jennifer here? still on? Is it she is still on. Yes. Yeah, yeah Jennifer. I'm, still here. I'm Bill. I'm the city manager. Uh, if you can get in touch with our office tomorrow, by any chance, give us contact info. Maybe we can find a time to talk before next Wednesday to try to get you up to speed at least a little bit. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay.
Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, all right. So that is that is it. Um, all right. So without any further objection, uh, we will adjourn eight thirty nine. Thank you. I just didn't just got this thing around to be signed. So make sure you all sign it for you. Thank you.